T-cell activation is a multi-step process. This process is necessary whether or not the T-cell is a cytotoxic T-cell or a helper T-cell. It involves the um, activation of two different receptors found on the T-cell. One of those receptors shown here is called the T-cell receptor. Now, I prefer to call this one the MHC recognition receptor because this is, in fact, binding to the MHC complex. Um, the MHC complex shown here, right? Here's my protein here. And this is going to connect with it. Now your book, this particular figure from the book, draws it a little differently than I do. Uh, that's okay. Here's the antigen. And in addition to the MHC complex receptor for the T cell, all T cells also have an antigen recognition protein. And this is a receptor for the antigen. And this protein will identify whether or not this particular antigen is self or non-self. Now this is the way the book shows it. I have a tendency to draw it a little bit different where we have my T cell shown here and then I typically draw my antigen binding receptor like this and my MHC molecule I tend to draw like so and sometimes it's got one leg and sometimes it's got two legs and it is attached to my, my uh, self cell. Okay, so whether that's my virally infected cell or not and then I generally will draw my MHC molecule like uh, receptor like so uh, and the reason I do this is because it makes it a little visually more clear how this antigen binding receptor is going to bind to my antigen the setup of course the actual molecular structure of the setup would have to be determined by something called x-ray crystallography and it's not something we really have so this drawing is as valid as this drawing but the basic idea is the same. We've got my antigen recognition protein, or I also like to call it my antigen binding protein. And so sometimes you'll see me put the ABP abbreviation, my antigen binding protein. And as I said, it is a receptor. When both of these receptors are stimulated at the same time, so we're gonna get activation of this receptor here and activation of this receptor here like so we're going to get a cascade of signaling events within this T cell and that process will activate the T cell from there it really depends on what kind of T cell we're dealing with if we're dealing with a cytotoxic T cell the result is death of the infected or cancerous body cell if we're dealing with a helper T cell, it's going to do something a little bit different. And we'll get to that. Now, T cells can recognize either class 1 or class 2. It really depends on which one of these MHC recognition proteins that they have and which one happens to bind with the complex. At these antigen binding receptors are very very specific and they will complex with only one particular type of antigen that the T cell is programmed to detect which we have talked about please note that this is a three star concept this is something that I want you to know well you should be able to describe how that T cell is being activated what receptors are involved and please be aware that on the exam I tend to use my preferred words so my T cell receptor is most likely going to be f described as my MHC recognition. It's really hard to write with this. MHC rec. Well, okay, we're just going to leave it at that. That pretends it says recognition protein. And so be aware that those are the more likely terms that I will use. I tend to use antigen recognition protein and antigen binding protein interchangeably with a slight preference for the anti-binding protein.
Now, we're going to get into something called CD8, CD4 markers. These are the uh, there's certain membrane proteins on the cell, and the main reason we care about these is because they determine what type of T cell we have. Okay, roughly speaking, um, the not roughly speaking at all. Sorry, back that up. So differentiation, remember the development of the T cell into a specialized type of cell. We're going to start out as our immature lymphocyte, our immature T cell, which will develop in the bone marrow, migrate to the thymus. We're going to do some selective processing. You'll want to make sure you go back and review that and you're aware of that. Cells that contain the CD8 marker are identified as um, CD8 T cells and they are either the cytotoxic or the regulatory T cells. The, these particular cells respond to MHC class 1, okay? Then there are CD4 cells on CD4 T cells, which are otherwise known as helper T cells, and these respond to class 2 MHC. On the exam, I am unlikely to use CD8 and CD4. I do want you to be at least loosely familiar with those terms because if you ever go on to become a laboratory tech or even just any of the professions that are going to be used lab results, you will often see counts of T cells based on whether or not they have these markers, the CD4, the CD8 markers. This is especially relevant because a very well-known virus human oh for heaven's sakes what does that stand for human immunodeficiency virus and that particular virus is the virus that can develop into AIDS and AIDS is fatal now we've actually gotten a lot better at treating this condition and prolonging the life of an individual that is infected with HIV. But uh, what happens with AIDS is it wipes out this particular class or HIV wipes out that particular class of T cells. And so if I were trying to determine how advanced um, HIV is and whether we're moving into the AIDS category, um, I might do a blood cell count where I'm going to do a differential count looking for these CD4 cells.